Have you ever wondered how many deaths are on your hands? If your answer is none, think smaller. What if every little thing you've ever killed were to come back to haunt you? <laughs> One evening, Helen was in her room writing in her, in her diary about the hopes and fears of her complicated nine-year-old life when she noticed something with eight legs crawling onto the paper. She didn't mean to scream and slam the book shut. It just happened. Then, overcome with curiosity and fear, slowly, carefully, she opened up the book and beheld the flattened remains of the former spider. Then a smile stretched across her face. Rest in pieces, she wrote about it. <laughs> she was glad the spider was dead. And yet, there was something about having a dead spider in one's diary that caused one to not want to write in her diary. <laughs> night after night, she would glance at the book stowed safely away in her shelf, then turn off her lamp and crawl into bed. She knew the dead spider couldn't hurt her. She knew her fears were irrational. And yet she also knew that the world didn't always behave in rational ways. Some months later, it was a rainy day at Quail Hollow Elementary School. This is a true story, by the way. I was there when, well, you'll find out soon enough. You see, like all of us children, Helen loved to jump through puddles. But unlike us boys, she wasn't particularly fond of the worms. In fact, she went out of her way to step on them, smashing them and ridding the world of as many creepies and crawlies as possible. Then a girl approached her, Gloria. Gloria didn't have any friends and she seldom spoke. At recess, she would sit off in a corner and just stare at, actually, we never did figure out what she was staring at. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Gloria whispered. Helen looked up from the flattened worm beneath her, her shoe. Why not? Haven't you heard about the Queen of the Flies? The who? <laughs> Years ago, a girl went to the school that loved worms, spiders, flies. She even let mosquitoes drink her blood. If anybody tried to squish a bug, she would attack them. Then one day, she picked up a black widow that bit her, and she died. But her ghost still haunts the school. <laughs> I've heard her voice. Really? What does she say? She doesn't say anything. She sings. Nice story, Gloria, but I don't believe in ghosts. Maybe you should. Remember Danny Hines, the boy who died of pneumonia? He used to love to step on spiders. You have been warned. <laughs> After school, Helen had to stay for orchestra practice. It was late in October, so by the time she was walking home, it was almost starting to get dark, and the lanterns were turning on. Thinking of Gloria's ridiculous story, she continued to stomp on as many worms as she saw along the way. At one point, she came to a field where there was an anthill. Without a moment's hesitation, she set down her violin case and kicked the whole thing over. She watched with satisfaction as hundreds of little ants scurried in a panic. Then she picked up a large rock and flattened the entire thing. Hundreds of little lives snuffed out like that. <laughs> As Helen continued to walk, due to all the rain, there was a lot of fog in the air. She could no longer see the school behind her, and she could only see a few houses in front of her. So she was a little confused when she heard the singing voice of a girl. Little helpless wounded souls, poor victims of oppression. <laughs> Helen looked around, but there was no one to be seen. But the voice, of course, was Gloria's. Very funny, Gloria, Helen called to the fog. When the moon is high, we'll rise and show you our aggression. At one point, Helen thought she saw Gloria's silhouette in the fog, but when she got another glance, Whoever, whatever it was, seemed to vanish. It's not that Helen feared the strange girl, it's just that, you know, she, she started to walk a little bit faster. That was the last she heard of the singing, but at one point, she thought she felt a little something crawling on her ankle. She bent down to scratch it, but then she felt it on her thigh. Speaking of which, do you ever get that feeling that something is crawling? Yeah! <laughs> 
just a piece of wood. Anyway, like me, Helen realized that her fears were completely irrational and there was nothing to be afraid of. Soon she was back, warm, in the comfort of her bedroom, wearing her favorite pajamas. It had been six months since the incident of the squash spider. Glancing up at the book, she decided it was time to confront her fears. So slowly, carefully, she pulled it off the shelf. And slowly, carefully, she opened it. And a brown spider leaped out and Helen screamed. Of course, as the thing scurried away, she realized that some other spider must have climbed into the book. It's not like a dead spider, some six month squash could somehow come back again. That, of course, was impossible. Though well, Helen knew one thing for sure, she was through with the diary. Dropping it in a trash can, she found herself glancing out the window, and she couldn't help but think about the words she heard in the fog, no doubt from Gloria, something about little creatures rising in the moonlight. Thankfully, there was no moon out tonight due to all the clouds. Not that that mattered. Helen knew that the moon could cause the tides to rise. She heard about it causing other things to rise, such as zombies and werewolves, but that, of course, was fantasy. The gravitational force of the moon could only raise little things, like water particles and bugs. No, not bugs. <laughs> Needing to get her mind off of these ridiculous thoughts, she was glad for a distraction. You see, something was causing the overhead light to flicker. A fly. Helen went out of the room and came back with the swatter. She waited for the little things to land on her desk. Then, she put the pest to its rightful end. She made doubly sure the little crumpled body was fully and completely dead, and turned off her lamp and crawled into bed. Only sleep didn't come. Perhaps it had something to do with the dead fly on her desk, or maybe the brown spider crawling somewhere in her room. Maybe it was because the room was still bright. Confused, she rolled over and looked at the window. The clouds were parting revealing a bright, full moon. An hour went by in silence, and then another. Helen was wide awake when something else landed on her cheek. Another one? She climbed out of bed, furious. She turned on her lantern. She picked up that fly swatter and then froze. The dead fly was no longer on the desk. It was buzzing around the ceiling, or some other fly was. Then she noticed the brown spider on the wall. It seemed to be staring right at her. Something was very wrong. And there was that singing voice again coming right outside her window. Through the alley in the shadows, swarming round the trash can, crawling through your darkest dreams, you'll scream just like a madman. Helen went to the window. She looked out and saw someone standing in her front yard, a girl she'd never seen before. The girl was staring straight back at her. What do you want? Helen demanded. The girl only continued to sing. Tickles on the neck and buzzing in the ears, little crawling monsters awakening the fears. Helen felt something crawling on her knee. A black ant? Had it somehow come back with her from the field? She flicked it off, and there was something crawling on her ankle. She looked down on the floor and saw to her horror that it was covered with black ants. Needing to get away, she ran to her door, but the knob was covered in brown spiders. Anywhere you go, we'll be there at your side. No matter where you run, there's nowhere you can hide. Helen ran to her bed, but somehow a slimy worm had gotten onto the pillow. With disgust, she flung it across the room. And with some dread, she threw off her covers, revealing hundreds of wriggling worms. <laughs> the longer it's been dead, the more of it will take. And we'll be back for more, make no mistake. There were ants, spiders, and flies on her ankle, on her thigh, on her back, on her arms, on her neck, on her face, and crawling into her mouth. Gross. This time, there was no room for a scream. When Helen didn't come back to class, our teacher explained that uh, her family had decided to homeschool. <laughs> However, Gloria had another theory, one involving the queen of the flies. From then on, I've always been more careful about where I step. 
And you should be too. Because if not, it's only a matter of time before you might feel something crawling 